What's up guys, Chad Caruso here. Today we're gonna to be learning 10 easy mini ramp grinds that anyone can learn. So this is a part of a video series I'm doing on my channel where I teach you how to skate mini ramp basically from scratch. We go over pumping and kick turns, go over most of the lip tricks, and then working our way up to this video where we learn some mini ramp grinds. So I know it says easy mini ramp grinds in the title, but when you're first learning these, it's definitely pretty difficult. And if you haven't seen all the other videos in this series, definitely recommend watching those and working your way up to this one. But yeah, once you're able to get these tricks down, it's gonna really open up your mini ramp skating, so I'd just like to share these tricks with you guys. All right, the first trick on our list is gonna be the backside 50-50 grind. Okay guys, so the backside 50-50 grind, probably gonna be the most used trick that you learn on a mini ramp, quarter pipe, anywhere. Basically, it's one of the easiest tricks and the easiest to lock into. It's easy to hold, but to learn it can be kind of difficult because you have to learn how to start shifting your weight from inside of the ramp and getting it on top of the coping. So the first thing you wanna focus on is just coming up the ramp with a 45 degree angle. Then you're just gonna kinda do a, a little manual, right? And as you feel your wheel coming on the coping, you're gonna start to press on your heel. And that's gonna shift your weight from being inside of the ramp to on top. Also, your body weight has to kinda shift too. So it's a weird thing to get used to. You're gonna wanna keep staying in the ramp to feel safe. But once you learn how to stand up, that's like the essential technique to all mini ramp tricks, I feel being able to shift your weight to being able to stand on top. So I recommend learning how to lock in like this for 50-50 grinds, because if you get that whole truck on the coping, you kind of leave a possibility for you to hang up when you go to turn into the ramp. So if you have your wheels on like this, there's almost zero chance of hanging up. So after you're able to just turn into the 50-50, lock your wheels in and stand up straight, once you're grinding, the easy part is gonna be coming back in really just a little bit of a kick turn. You just gotta make sure that you're leaning forward so you don't slip back. Okay guys, next up is trick number two, the front side 50-50 grind. Okay, so the front side 50-50, definitely an awkward trick on mini ramp. You wouldn't think it'd be that hard, but something about when you lock in and you're on top of the coping, it just feels really weird to come back in. So the first way I think about it is, you can't do it like a backside 50-50. You can't have your wheels on the coping like this, you know, where you're grinding and you don't have your whole truck on. That's not gonna work. You have to get your whole truck on the coping, just the way your body weight kind of sits on the board. So now you got your whole truck on the coping and you're grinding, and when you go to come back in, it just feels like you're gonna hang up. It just feels really awkward. So I like to do this little bit of a hop when I come in, almost like a little ollie, and that gets my truck off the coping. So it can feel pretty weird to do that little bit of a hop to come back in. I mean, because you're essentially almost doing like an air, right? You're getting a little off the coping and coming in. So you're gonna have a lot more speed when you come in like that, as opposed to just turning in, right? Because you're, you're like airborne and then there's more momentum coming into the ramp. So you really gotta make sure you lean forward on this one. And I think that's why it's a lot harder for people to learn, because it just takes a different level of commitment when you're coming in. And for trick number three, we have the backside 5-0 grind. So for the backside 5-0, you're gonna apply the same techniques that you did for the backside 50-50. The only difference is when you lock in on your heel this time, you're just gonna keep your weight on your tail. And you're gonna press down almost as hard as you can with your weight leaning forward, right? Because as you're leaning back, if you lean back, you're gonna slip out. So you wanna make sure you're pressing down as hard as you can while also leaning forward. So one thing I do different on the 5-0 than the 50-50 is I kind of open my shoulders up and almost look straight ahead when I'm grinding. Cause if I don't and I do it just like the 50-50, when I grind, it starts to turn on its own and then I'm almost overturned when I'm gonna come back in. So I find if I almost am looking straight ahead where I'm going, it naturally starts to just turn and bring me into the ramp. And for some of you guys, it's gonna feel more comfortable to grind the backside 5-0 with your whole truck on the coping, but I really recommend trying to break that habit and just learning it with your one wheel on the coping. It'll just make it a lot easier down the road when you're learning tricks like 5-0 grind to fakie and other tricks like that. Okay, so for trick number four, we have the front side 5-0 grind. So I think the most helpful tip for this trick is, 
instead of just trying to go right for the 5-0 right off the bat, I recommend practice flying out of the mini ramp onto the deck. If you keep doing this over and over and kind of keep working your way closer to the coping, you'll start to see that the resemblance of like flying out and getting on top of the coping, and eventually you'll be able to just lock it right into the 5-0. So once you're able to lock into the 5-0, the next step is to just kind of sit back on it. I almost feel like I'm sitting in a chair, I'm like leaning into the ramp. It feels a little weird, you might like overshoot sometimes when you're doing that, but once you get it down, you keep doing it, it'll feel more comfortable. And yeah, same as the backside 5-0, I'm grinding straight right off the bat and then it starts to turn as I'm grinding. And since my whole truck is on the coping, I like to do a little bit of a hop just to make sure I don't hang up. Okay guys, trick number five is gonna be the backside of people grind. Okay, so now we're entering the world of feebles and smiths, which take a different kind of skill. You have to learn how to be able to lean back and forward at the same time. So as I'm coming up the ramp for this trick, I like to come at a really big angle, right? That way I'm almost thinking about it as a ledge. And I'm right up and just let my wheel hang up onto the coping. Now try not to think about it like a 50-50 where, you know, you're getting on that one wheel and you're kind of on top really got to think like you're staying in the ramp and staying sideways. Now once you're able to get that wheel on and lock into position, the hard part is kind of sitting all the way back on your tail while pointing and pushing your front foot out forward. And that kind of locks the board in place and keeps it like where it needs to be. And then leaning back kind of gets through that resistance of like the ramp holding you where you are. So as you're grinding, you're going to want to make sure that your shoulders are turned into the ramp Naturally, this wheel's gonna grab and it's gonna make you wanna go the opposite direction. So you really have to focus on looking into the ramp and keeping those shoulders pointing into the ramp. And one more really helpful tip when you're doing feebles or smiths is to make sure that you lock like your body into position. So once you get into it, you kind of like poke your leg out and then freeze in that position. And that kind of just sits you where you need to be and helps the board push through. Then when you're ready to come in, just make sure you press on the tail hard because you don't want those wheels to hit the coping when you're coming in. Make sure you get it around and then lean forward. Now after that, we have trick number six, the front side Smith grind. So when you come up for a front side Smith grind, you're going to come up the same way as you would for a front side 5-0. And you're basically combining like the feeling of a feeble grind and a 5-0 together. All right, so when you lock into it, you're gonna think just like the 5-0, and then you're gonna dip your nose down, point your front foot forward, and then sit all your weight on the tail. So one thing to keep in mind when you're trying this is that not all ramps are the same. You know, I'm doing a Smith grind on this cement quarter pipe today, and you know, this is really grippy cement, so my wheel on the inside is catching, as well as these wheels aren't really sliding as well. So sometimes you might be doing it the right way when you're learning it, but since the ramp is a little sticky, it might not feel like you're doing it right. So with the front side Smith grind, unlike the 50-50 and the 5-0, you don't really have to hop in from this one. And you can, and I've seen people do it that way, but the way I kind of do it is, like you're already dipped into the ramp, so I just kind of press on my front foot, and that kind of rolls it off the coping into the ramp. All right, now we have trick number seven, the front side feeble grind. Okay guys, so the first thing you want to think about when you're trying to front feeble is just getting that one wheel on, right? Don't worry about your shoulders or anything. Just focus on leaning back, getting that wheel on, and being able to grind it. Now just remember, when you're doing feebles, you got to poke your front foot out forward and then be leaning all the way back, sitting on the tail. So something I've noticed doing feeble grinds over the years is it kind of depends on the size of the quarter pipe. You know, if, sometimes if it's steeper, it's easier for you to grind it the way the board sits on the coping. If it's mellow, your wheels aren't gonna really get sideways and it just kind of sticks. You know, also, like I said before, the material plays a part. So just keep these things in mind when you're trying it because you might be doing the right technique and it just might be harder to do on that ramp. And a lot of the time when I'm trying this trick, it'll shoot out in front of me. That's normal, you know, just you gotta figure out that balance of leaning back enough to where it's grinding and then leaning forward so you're not like slipping out. And the hardest part of this trick for me is coming in. So it really wants to turn your shoulders in the opposite direction. So when I'm frontside feebling, I'm almost opening up my shoulders, 
into the ramp. Yeah, it's kind of an awkward position, but it really helps for coming back in. So when you go to come back in, you just wanna make sure you're pressing the tail a little harder than normal to get those wheels over the coping and into the tranny. All right, next up on our list is trick number eight, backside smith grind. Okay, so this is probably my favorite mini ramp trick of all time. And one of the main problems I see people having with this trick is they like to stay on the inside of the ramp. Sometimes it kind of feels like you're doing it, but there's a technique that if you use it, you can kind of sit on the top, and be able to hold it for a while. So the main thing I'm thinking about when I'm doing a back smith is my feet. I'm focusing on pointing my front foot down, kind of just having my toe on the board, right? And I'm just pointing down like that. And then my back foot, I'm also on my toes. And that's kind of putting the pressure on the tail, keeping it like a manual. And it just kind of keeps me light footed and locked in the position. And one way to know if you're doing it right is you'll probably slip into a lip slide, like just barely and slip out. That's the type of bail that happens to me all the time, even though I do the trick pretty consistently, I'll still sometimes miss the lock and kind of slip out. So if you're kind of locking in that way, you're probably pretty close to getting it. Yeah, once you're able to sit on it and lean back, the next thing is just kind of putting your weight on the front, shifting it into the transition. Okay, so for trick number nine, we have the front side tail slide. All right guys, so when you're coming up for a front side tail slide, there's two different ways you can think about it. One is kind of just doing a quick scrape with your tail, really quickly kind of getting it into a tail slide. And then the other is like a little front side ollie. Right, so it's more of a pop, kind of getting into the tail slide. Now, if getting into the tail slide like that doesn't feel natural for you at first, you can just get into the front side 5-0 and kind of just start turning it into a tail slide. That can kind of like be your gateway into learning front side tail slides. Then once you're able to lock into the tail slide, I like to land on my toes, kind of keep pressure right in the center of the tail. That kind of locks it in and prevents my foot from like touching the coping and slowing down my slide. And then as I'm sliding, I just kind of stay behind it. So then once my wheels kind of catch that grip, it brings me back up to like my center and then ready to drop in. All right guys, and the last trick on our list is gonna be the backside tail slide. Okay, so I can remember when I first started trying to learn this trick and I really wanted to do it, but I've just come up to the coping, try to pop and it just wouldn't come with me. I'd go to pop and just, fly away from me not even close and then over time I started to realize a technique that really helps get it more consistently that's learning how to scrape your tail so if you just practice these like half 180s on flat ground where you're just kind of scraping your tail really quickly you just get really good at doing those over and over and then you take it to the transition it makes it a lot easier to scrape that tail and get into the tail slide so that was like the thing that blew my mind once I figured it out and it just made the tail slide much easier. So after you're able to lock into it, you're gonna be on your toes and sliding. And then the next problem you're probably gonna have is you're gonna to start to over rotate, right? You're almost like just jump off the board because you keep turning. And that's honestly a tough problem to overcome. But I realized sometimes just commitment is the thing that separates you landing a trick or not. You know, and once you're like committed to landing, your shoulders start to turn in the way that they weren't before. You know, and just trying to look over your left shoulder as you're tail sliding of where you're going could really help you pull in the trick. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. I hope it was helpful for you. And if you have any skateboarding related questions or any questions about the tricks in this video, just leave them in the comments below. All right, thanks for watching.